My school had many teachers leaving and going. That was the a common thing in our area. Everyone in my class couldn't wait to be transferred into 9C, especially when Miss Smith moved to a new school. The excitement coursed through every student at Woodridge when they heard that a young male teacher was being transferred to take over 9C. The word quickly spread throughout the school to who was going to be in this teacher's classroom. Me and Jonas were selected as well as 15 other students. The day finally came when we're brought to this teacher's classroom. The young man stood near the blackboard. His curly blonde hair and light blue eyes, he was a kind of teacher all of the girls desired. All fifteen of us stumbled to the back of the classroom, where he waited for silence. I looked at Jonas, smirking and crossing our fingers that we would sit next to each other this year. We did not want another repeat of Miss Smith's class where we had to learn a bit of sign language to communicate to each other due to us being separated that far away. The man chuckled when the silence descended. He then picked up the small piece of chalk and started to write a name on the board. All of us tried to make out what his name said, and until he backed away to his seat smiling at each of our glances at one another. Mr. Kenji Larson. That was the teacher assigned to take over 9C, an English class. The only thing left now was the seating plan. We all dreaded sitting near a person we either couldn't stand or didn't want to know about them. Mr. Larson then clasped his hands together. With a soft smile, he then said, Each of you can choose who you like to sit next to, my orders. The biggest relief swept over the class as everyone happily murmured and tried finding a seat with either their friend or by themselves. But me and Jonas didn't hesitate to sit at the very back of the classroom. I sat in the middle row whilst he sat corresponding to me. That was the start of all the good things Mr. Larson did to make us feel welcomed in his classroom. Soon enough every child at Woodridge had a favorite teacher, and that was him. Unfortunately none of them were able to know the pure delight we felt when we had English. Mr. Larson was a charming man who none of us were bored from his long talks about Shakespeare and Scrooge. Until that day. It was a casual Wednesday afternoon when I had double English with Mr. Larson. It was the end of the lesson, and all of us were seated at our seats when he began chattering about the small study session after school. Okay everyone, I want all of you to listen up. Now this study session is only for the chosen students I am going to call out. These are the students that maybe need some extra help on Romeo and Juliet, Mr. Larson said, eyeing every child that froze in their chairs, not wanting to hear their names being called. Asham, you better get your stuff ready, Elijah. Your name is going to get called up, Jonas snickered at me as he grinned with pride. Nope, I aced that test, I made sure of it, I mocked back as he slumped in his chair in utter silence as he realized he didn't study like I did. Can the following students stand up and line outside? The rest of you stay seated, I will dismiss you to go home soon, Mr. Larson announced as he picked up a piece of paper, cleared his throat, and began reading. Selena, Charles, Thomas, Owen, Avery, Melinda, Julianne, Benjamin, Cora, Jordan, Christy, Luan, Reese, and finally Vincent. Each person rose up from their seats, uttering a small groan and lined up outside. I was instantly stunned to not see Jonas up in that line, however soon enough we were dismissed to go home. The next day was normal, however we were told by other English teachers that some of us were transferred to different classrooms. I thought we were all going to stay in the same class, but that's a bit odd. Maybe Mr. Larson couldn't handle us, chuckled Jonas as we peered at the list of names of the people who were transferred to another class. That is basically the whole class. I wonder why they have been transferred, I blurted out as I looked at Jonas who frowned and leaned against the wall. I don't know, but I'm not going to be hanging around Mrs. Gellin's class for too long. Let's go to English, he replied back, patting me on the shoulder as we walked through the huge crowd of children and teenagers, pushing and shouting, trying to make their way to first period. We both arrived on time to Mr. Larson's class. The one thing that was off was that he didn't do as usual. Good morning, class. Ready for English. Instead, Mr. Larson stood up with the usual small chalk in his hand and sternly looked at each child individually, as if he was checking them for hidden knives. Both of us trotted to our usual seats, as we stared at our new classmates entering our classroom. It was nothing like I've ever seen before. The students that walked into Mr. Larson's classroom did not appear normal. Each child that took their designated seats depending on where Mr. Larson strictly pointed did not look appealing. It was as if all the color from their cheeks and bodies slowly bled out, their sunken eyes and small limp fingers. Me and Jonas were fixated on these appearances, 
That was when a harsh knock resonated through my skin, and everyone was fixated on Mr. Larson. The one thing that was also odd about Mr. Larson was that his once beautiful blonde curly hair was now messy and strands looked as if they were purposefully cut off. His white shirt and black tie looked torn at some parts, and some of his laces from his shoes were missing. With a hoarse voice he then muttered, I am going to be handing out a piece of paper with your name on it. If you lose this paper, well, there is no going back for you. Mr. Larson whimpered as he took a pile of neatly laid papers and began handing it out to some of the children. Only half of the class received this paper. Mr. Larson then walked towards us with two papers in his hand as he shakily placed them on each of our desks. With a slight frown I turned to Jonas who had the same expression as me. Confusion. The silence laid steady against the walls of the classroom. Jonas, with slight horror, was looking at the sheet of paper. I then peered down reading the words it said. A list of rules for staying in 9C. Do not be late. If the door is shut that means you are no longer allowed to enter the classroom and accept the consequences behind it. You shall not be saved. Do not look, touch, or interact with the wailing girl. If she bothers you, ignore her. If she screams at you, walk away. If she is crying, move yourself far away from her as possible, no matter what the circumstances are. You must bring the following items to class. At least two torches, a mirror, and the key to access the back door in the classroom. If you do not bring any of these items into class, you won't be saved. If a teacher named Mr. Drentel walks into the classroom and says that he will be covering the remainder of the lesson, grab the key to the back door in the classroom and enter it. Do not hesitate. Do not talk to Mr. Drentel. Do not maintain eye contact other than the back door. If the only people going to the back door is you, then you are the only remaining person alive now. If you hear the bell ring, do not get up. That is not the actual bell that dismisses you. I will tell you to when to leave. It may be minutes or hours you have to wait until class or school is over. It may be nighttime before you can leave. But whatever you do, do not leave this classroom until I command you to do so. Do not speak. The only time you can speak is when I ask you a question. They do not like anyone to speak without a warning. Do not ask me about anything, only about the lesson. You can ask me questions when I command you to do so. Be safe. Trepidation sunk into my hands and body as the only thing that moved slightly was my eyes which darted from each word consistently. Was this a sick joke? Has Mr. Larson really lost his mind? I slowly rose my head and began to look at Jonas whose eyes were angrily drawn to Mr. Larson. Before any of us could get a word out, the boy at the front row did. What the fuck is this? Rule number three. Kill the person next to you. Are you fucking insa? The stillness persevered the classroom. It was like a chilling, dead hand that held the students in place. Nothing in the room moved an inch. The pounding and screeching resonated throughout the classroom as my ears were brought back from the cold, tranquil moment that I had. No one moved. Everyone had their eyes on something at the front of the classroom. I wasn't sure if it was me going crazy or if it was Mr. Larson, but something was not right here. Mr. Larson stood there blank-faced. I wanted to scream, I really did. Looking across from the multiple chairs and tables in front of me, my eyes lingered upon the head that was face down on the floor. The arms and legs were sort of bent in abnormal positions, stretched far beyond any human body could reach. Fluid seeped from each leg and arm, covering the wooden floor with a thick coat of red blood. David Miller laid there, his thick black curls dripping the blood from his face. Silence. We were quickly interrupted by a faint, trembling voice who ushered us to focus on what we were about to learn today. The lesson dragged on, my eyes constantly looking at the paper and a good classmate that was lying, sprawled out at the front of the classroom. I was practically falling asleep when I first heard it. I thought my mind was playing tricks with me, reminding me of the guilt that consumed the only remaining thoughts I had in the classroom. But no, this certainly did sound real. The shrilling scream that echoed the halls of Woodridge. I waited, hoping to hear teachers pop out from their classroom and deal with the situation and maybe, just maybe enter 9C. But that didn't happen. 
The bell rang. A faint relief swept over the class as we realized English was over. I quickly glanced at Jonas as I started to cram my books into my bag. Jonas turned his head to me, his cold eyes staring deep into me, then at the paper that laid evenly on the table. I felt my legs slip back into the chair as I realized what was going on. The sound of cluttering and chatter filled the hallway of the school building. Every child and teenager sounded as if they were being dismissed out of school. Did they forget about us? That sharp thought edged into my mind. Every child was leaving the school but not us. Surely every teacher checked out their register and form to see that none of us were there. It was at least half an hour that passed. Every new student that was assigned to our classroom left. It was only Jonas, me, Kennedy, Isaac, Dwayne, Harley, and Annie, and of course Mr. Larson. That is when we heard it. It wasn't the same as before, the shrill. It was as if it was in our classroom that minute. Dysphoria held my body in place, my chest becoming tighter and tighter with every breath I took in. It was louder, coming closer and closer to our classroom until... Creak. The door slowly opened. A blonde girl walks into the classroom. Beautiful, flawless skin and gushing green eyes, she was assigned to sit next to me on the middle row. Green eyes gazed over to me as a dimple formed after her short smile that lit up the classroom. She placed her bag next to her and put her head down. Mr. Larson tiredly began talking about Romeo and Juliet's background as a faint sniffle came from the girl. At this point I was dreary not to notice that Jonas was asleep. A faint cry penetrated the room. I quickly looked over at the girl who had her head down. The screech filled the dim room. At this point Jonas was alerted of the situation. We both were startled but continued to focus on Mr. Larson's speech, his voice getting louder as the screaming did the same. The girl muttered to herself and calmed down. She then slowly turned to me, her blonde hair sitting on either side of her shoulders, her warm smile and eyes looking into mine. She then whispered, Can you H help me with something? <laughs>